For this one, we're going to put the T6 into a bunch of scary places. Aerobatic training to me is training you for the things, what happens when things go wrong. I showed Jared what my passenger did to me that one time. The only time I've ever been scared in one of these things, he pulled it so fast, I couldn't get on the stick fast enough before it snapped. Let me just try to simulate what that guy did to me uh, in the steep turn. So that was what the, the scariest thing I've ever had happen. Yeah, that's true. So he just went and he just yanked it. Yeah, that's what happened. If you've never seen that before, that's one of these scary dudes. Well, we were not very high. We were at like 3,000. So I, I was like, if that went into a stand, we're dead. Oh, yeah. yeah. That altitude. Jared suggested we design a lesson around that experience. What happens when you pull too hard in a T6? What happens if you roll too slowly or don't bring the nose high up far enough? Or what happens if you stall the airplane in a loop here? Those are the things that expand your envelope way more than just doing a loop correctly every single time. There's no doubt that this is the airplane that I'm most proud to be able to fly. It's not something I ever thought I was gonna get access to. Beautiful night, sold Harvard. Its American cousin is the T6, and that's what we're gonna be flying today with my good friend, Jared. I've flown some pretty cool airplanes since you and I last flew. And when you, you start flying a T6 around, it's like everything else becomes really, really easy almost. It's like the T6 unlocked all that, so I, I would probably say it's the, the one I'm most proud of. You know, like I, I got typed in a lot of interesting jets and the L29 and all that. But uh, I mean, that airplane was the one that unlocked all this, I'll tell you that much. It seems universal that those of us that earn a T6 checkout hold a special place in our heart for it. Yeah, everybody's got that picture, the proud T6. It's my first ride. It was my dad, and then he ended up being my first ride I ever gave in an extra. So he never got the ride that we paid for, but I took him for a ride after I got my checkout in that thing. So it worked out kind of cool. And I have Jared to thank for my aerobatic addiction. That's the first airplane that I ever truly experienced serious aerobatics. It was a tiny taste. This was a video that we shot way back in 2015. And it's amazing how far both Jared and I have come in that time. Yeah, that's definitely full circle, right? Where it all started. <laughs> it's been awesome to follow his progression and I'm happy to help promote what he's doing. He'll come to you to work with you in your airplane or if you can get to Chicago. And now I've started my own flight school. So here's our extra 330LX. The main focus of our flight school revolves around this airplane. We're the only ones that, that I know of in the country, possibly the world, where we solo rent this airplane, just like a flight school Cessna. The fleet here is impressive, including this beast, which is probably the highest horsepower Model 12 that exists today anywhere. We flew that, of course, but for this one, I want to focus on the custom T6 lesson that Jared designed for me. All my flying has been pretty normal ops in the T6. Stuff. You haven't flown a T6 in a while though, right? Yeah, I'm about a year out. Well, the nice part is you know how to do acro and you know how to fly a T6. So we're just going to combine those two things. But aerobatic training, in and of itself to me is more than just teaching you how to do the correct thing. How do you correctly roll? How do you correctly loop? Yeah, I like the idea of just putting it in some yeah. un uncomfortable places. Yeah, we'll have you accelerated, stall it, and all that stuff. Hey, brakes are on. Clear prop. While waiting for the oil to warm up, let's talk about some key differences between T6s and Harvards. First, you got these gear doors or strut fairings. I've never seen those installed on a Harvard, and I think that's because the Canadian forces operated in the winter and snow could get bound up in there and break something. And because we operate in the winter, the exhaust is a much longer extended pipe that has the cabin heat pipe running through it. T6s do not have that, and the exhaust is cut short. I can already see my breath back here. <laughs> uh, I got the heat open. For you. We're just gonna have to get a Harvard, I guess. And some other differences with the Harvard. Ours is a lot more original than that T6, so you'll see that we don't have anything modern in here. It's the original panel. We've also got the spade style stick, which is pretty cool. And the mixture operates backwards, which I think is a British thing. Well, the ground has done it. Now you gotta get this airplane back on the ground by so. So I've definitely got some T6 time, but I haven't flown the Harvard for a little bit. It's probably been a year, and I'm looking forward to some advanced training with Jared today. 
I don't know if, if I pulled the mixer back enough, but it's like, yeah, it's fine. Three quarters. Can you see it? Yep, I can see it. I, I have it all back here. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So remind me again what you don't have. Uh, the only things that I can't do are raise the landing gear, I can't start it, and I can't manipulate the radio. And uh, carb heat is this down here, and I think that's the same spot as ours. Yep. And you don't have carb heat there, correct? Only I have carb heat up here. Correct. Yeah, I, I don't have carb heat either. So this episode won't cover basic T6 training. I've got several episodes covering my entire checkout process. One of the greatest pieces of advice I was ever given when it comes to flying Warbird, or really any cool airplane for that matter, is everybody's looking at you, right? Yeah. Don't, don't be taxiing too fast. Don't be doing something stupid. Yeah. <laughs> everybody's looking at you. Everybody's looking at you. That's true. This episode will cover some advanced concepts, but please do consider it as the beginning of a conversation that you can finish with your instructor or go see Jared. Let's let's push it up to 34 inches of manifold pressure on the takeoff. Two zero nine or seven thirty six four miles per hour for the localizer three three approach. Okay, ready to go. I got my eyes closed. Zero zero nine or five hour wind three three zero zero nine. Continue inbound. Missed approach instructions are to fly runway heading, maintain three thousand feet. Report when going mid. All right, on the mid runway heading, fly maintain three thousand. I will report the mid zero nine or two zero zero nine five. But once I hit the throttle, this airplane felt just like home, and the only fundamental difference in terms of flying it is operating the power push, which we don't have in our Harvard Mark IV. Power push. Gear up. There you go. All right, let's come back to 30 inches. 2,000 RPM. So, yeah, you're going to roll it. We're going to loop it, we're going to do a half Cuban, barrel roll, and do all these things correctly. You're going to do them correctly, but more than that, I want you to do an accelerated stall while we're in a steep bank to the right, or while we're in the down line of a loop, or coming over the top, and all of these weird things I want to put you in, just so you can kind of experience what's going to happen with the airplane. It's not the end of the world, but you need some altitude, and you need to know what to do in those moments. Alright, so I guess we're going for six then, or something? Yeah, six, six, will be, six will be fine. I mean, there's plenty of holes. And now you come back to 26 inches, it's uh, 1800 RPM. And this is going to be our acro power setting. We're going to leave it right here for our aerobatics. Okay. All right, a little clearing turn. Left, left 90, right 90. That's a pretty picture out there. Yeah, it's awesome. If I was going to ferry an aircraft like this anywhere, I would definitely want SiriusXM Aviation Data on board. They're a supportive sponsor. I want to thank them. And we are currently doing a giveaway for a GDL52 and a data subscription on Instagram. I don't see anybody. I don't see anybody either. All right, do you want to start with some acro or do you want to start with doing like accelerated stalls? Might as well start with putting it in weird positions. So. Yeah, yeah. So who's, who's going to bring us down at 20 inches of manifold pressure? And we're going to start with an accelerated stall. Okay. Just, just give it a left steep turn, normal, normal steep turn. As the airplane slows down. And right as we get to about 120, I want you to pull hard. So that's where we're at now, so pull hard? Yeah, so start pulling harder and harder and harder, 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 harder. Now unload. There you go. And then just roll the wings straight level, and that's it. Yeah. Now, I want you to do that from a right steep turn. And use runner to pick it up, or what? Yeah, yeah, so you're just going to unload the stick and then pick it up at your feet, right? So you know you're going to be get, needing to give it a left rudder eventually. So go ahead and start pulling it harder. Harder. Unload. There you go. I probably pushed too much. Eh? A little much. Yeah, a little too much. That's, not, that's okay. So just unloading is all you need to do. Yeah. And that's it. And that's the same thing that happens in a loop. You want to do one more? Yeah, but thank you. Uh, sure. Yeah, let's do it. 20 inches looks good. Which way do you want to go? Left or right? Uh, it seems like right was the scarier way, right? Yeah, because remember the way that these things stall, it's, it's going to drop a right wing. Yeah. So let's do it from a right steep turn because that's going to make it the, the most critical. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, and don't be in a rush, even at this altitude, really. It's not a rush. Let, let the airplane kind of roll around and see what it looks like. Go ahead and start pulling a little harder. Can be flat too, you be so just let it happen for a bit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Harder, harder, good. Yeah. Now on the road. That's all there is to it. Yeah, okay. And I'm going to have you do that when we do a loop, too. Kind of on the down line, I'll have you do it so you can see what it feels like. So let's go ahead and push it back up to 26 inches. Engine instruments are looking good. Now the biggest thing for the roll is make sure you don't push. If the airplane gets below probably about a half a G, the engine is going to quit. Okay. Uh, not the end of the world if it does. It'll keep running. That prop's got a lot of inertia. Yeah. So just make sure you don't push. That's all. What I want you to do is bring the nose down and accelerate the airplane to about between 
140 and 150 miles an hour. You're going to pitch the nose up to your feet around the horizon and then pull left to right aileron, around, whichever way you want to go. I've got to go left first? Yeah, go ahead. So a little bit of nose up, right about there, unload, roll, everything it's got. Good. You're going to see it needs some rudder to counteract that adverse yaw. I need a more rudder. Well, that was actually pretty good. Maybe a little bit, a little bit more rudder on the entry, maybe just a smidge, but that was, that was pretty dang good. Okay. You went to the right?
about here is where you start rolling. So again, this thing is very similar to the Harvard. The only real difference is the power push to get the hydraulics engaged. So let's skip to the pattern. Bring the nose up just a little bit so you can get below 150. And let's go uh, power push and gear down. Power push. There you go. Gear's coming down. There's bunk, bunk. I got two thumbs, I got fingers, pins, and lights. Gear is down. Excellent. The tower sent us on a long downwind for spacing, so let's skip to the longer and flatter final than I'd prefer to fly in a T6. What's the wind? Did he give us the wind? Wind check? I'll ask. Wind 340 at 4. 340 at 4 whole knots. Oh yeah, flight, right. Yeah, just a little bit. Looking good, my friend. It's always nice when the instructor has nothing to say during an approach and landing. And I still have to pinch myself that I get to fly a T6 and I encourage you to give it a shot if you can reach out to someone like Jared. So I hope you enjoyed this one and there's lots more content coming like this, but also instrument flying and aerobatic stuff as well. North American 325, make a left turn on Charlie or 18. Okay, make a left turn now, we get slow down here. Uh, a little bit slower, I'll make the next left turn, either a Charlie or a 1A. Thank you. Until the next one, keep your flight chops sharp. North American 325, try Charlie after parking and monitor ground point 7, good day. Charlie after parking, monitor ground, North American 325, thanks for help. Hey, nice to bad, dude. Thanks, man. It's almost like you know what you're doing.